Hi, I'm Jim Alvarez with uh, TNN Radio with Mike Burrell. We're here at the Belly Up uh, Tavern in Solano Beach with uh, Exine and John. So we're here to cover X tonight. Tell us a little bit about, uh, one, who are you and uh, why are you here to see X? My name is Scotty Riggs. I kind of grew up on X and, and, and the whole early punk rock scene. It's one of those bands that's just kind of carried along throughout my life. You're telling us over here, young lady, what is the reason yeah. you like X so much? I mean, aside from the fact that it's uh, great music, great lyrics, great riffs, it's really incredible sex music. What, what about Los Angeles fosters this type of, you know, this type of music, and alternative music at that time? There was a lot of stuff going on in 77 through, you know, 1980 when Los the, the song Los Angeles first, or record first came out. Um, Los Lopez were doing their own thing, you know, over unbeknownst to us. And um, I think the real advantage of, of LA is that it, the scene was incredibly eclectic. Bands like, you know, Black Randy or The Deadbeats or Weirdos and Screamers and Germs and Alley Cats and Go Go's. And I mean, it was all, but everybody had their own kind of sound. And it wasn't until later that it got a little more kind of codified and the punk rock sounds like this. You know. Yeah, no, what do you I think, think it's uh, When you say the Blasters and Lobos, it's really interesting because uh, we did all have so much in common, but, but yet Phil and, and, and Dave from the Blasters and, and the other guys too, they were hanging out only in the black clubs when they were kids, you know, right, right. to break a big Joe Turner. Um, Los Lobos had an East LA kind of sensibility and a very much like Spanish language. And then we had more of urban, um, you know, rich versus poor, sure. Charles Bukowski, you know, Raymond Chandler us kind of view. And when you mix all those together, it's really kind of all the same thing expressed, you know, different ways. What is the biggest change that you have seen in the music industry, whether it be recording or the marketing of your music? Well, oh. the music industry is, again, there are six corporations that control all media. So you've got Miley Cyrus, you've got the Musketeer girls who are porn stars that on their 18th birthday they turned out, you know. Sure. And um, all it is is, is you know, is, is the pores of Babylon, you know. There isn't really any anything to, that doesn't exist as far as, you know, people like us. We should not concern ourselves with that side of things, really, because that exists only for people who really have no clue about what music or culture or art is. It would be like going to a museum and the only thing and there would be like, you know, Packaging from you know oh look a McDonald's package Rapper, yeah. oh yes like what well, there, there's no content <laughs> greasy bag greasy bag but that, that there's no content maybe right. like Andy Warhol's dream right yeah I know his <laughs> early stuff no um, doubt no doubt what's changed is that is that everything is much more self-conscious everything has been marketed and re-examined I mean even people using brands the, the word branding. As it applies to themselves, or or, or just as they're, they're starting out a band and they want to brand their band, it's like just be a person for a while. You know, it's like the same thing as uh, you know deciding what kind of a career your kid's going to have when they're entering preschool and shit like that. It's like everybody is so they're they're constantly looking around and they're looking in the mirror and they're checking out their shit and, and it's it's just no, it's it's just that's the saddest thing. Or the biggest difference, I mean, in culture, sure. you know, in our world, and then it spills over to the music industry. And I think there's still a lot of um, nobody has figured out how to to do this direct to fan thing. You know, I mean, everyone's trying, everyone's trying to, and in some ways that's great because there's no bottlenecks for the big companies to filter everything through. All the independent stuff is is, is still, you know, as long as those independent record companies and, and people can make their own stuff, there's the, the, the difficulty now is cutting through the static because yeah, so everybody has a band. Everybody's making music. Zine, I have a question actually for you. You brought it up already. Uh, one of my questions was, you get a lot of comparisons of both your lyrics and uh, about you know being akin to Charles Bukowski. And, and obviously, you probably already answered it, but how do you feel about that? It's a privilege to be part of that legacy of the Doors and the Bukowski and the Whiskey and the Sunset Strip and Venice and the Beatniks and poetry um, because you know I, I didn't come here to do any of that. I, I came to California because I had to get out of Florida. I had no intention of being in a van and so you know, it, you, know you, you feel like it, it's, it's an honor to be part of it but you would never kind of uh, it's just a profession in, in, in that regard. It's not like there's not a love for it but 
it's an accident, I guess you could say, that that happened. Um, but, um, I don't know, it's kind of complicated because you feel like you owe them to be good, to work hard and be good, and the people coming after you, that maybe you'll inspire someone to be the next person and then people right. say, wow, that person really represents L.A. I think art and writing is, is here so that people can make sense of life because sometimes you can't just be liberal about what's happening. A painting can explain to you in your inside of you uh, something about reality that makes it make more sense than if you actually even experience it. I would say the, I would say the, the biggest for me the, the biggest um, influence of all those people um, is the simplicity, mm -hmm. and, and that's where um, songs like Los Angeles or Your Phone's Off the Hook or, or even um, later stuff, uh, Double Doll or, or whatever. There's just you, you get a sense of, of place and a time, people, and, and and you get a, a bit of a scene even if set up for you, even if it's not a um, a story. It doesn't, have, it doesn't necessarily have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Some of the like do, some of them don't. Yeah. yeah. But, but, and and they were, you know, simple talk, simple words. Uh, you know, I give Lou Reed some credit. Sure. And, and uh, you know, certainly Jim Morrison. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was one thing that attracted Ray um, and Eric. He read something in the LA Weekly, an early article, and said, "Huh, this is kind of similar." I have poetry and rock music. Huh, maybe I should go see this. And then we did, and we were lucky enough to make four records before that. Yeah, so. we, I have a whole book of questions, but I, I won't, we won't keep you any any longer than, than okay. uh, keep you out the Your audience here. will get bored. I know. <laughs> this is TNN Radio uh, with John Doe and Exine from X here at the Delia.